All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about what we mean by mutual gain from trade, which is a key concept to understand Pareto efficient allocation. If I have time, I'll also talk about Pareto efficiency. If not, I'm going to make another separate video for Pareto efficiency. So what, what, what do we mean by mutual gain from trade? Um, well, so first of all, let's um, draw the edge work box. So let's give an example. So say a, agent A brings three apples and, and two bananas, and then agent B brings uh, three apples and then, uh, well, two bananas, all right? So therefore, total number of good one or apple is six, total number of good two is, is four. That means we must have six by four Edgeworth bucks, okay? All right. So, um, well, this is where agent A is located, where agent B is located. Um, so this is gonna be four units. So that means uh, this is point one, two, three, and four for agent A, and this has to be six. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so if this is one, the corresponding point here has to be uh, three, because remember the total number of Bananas, good two is four. So every time this plus this must be adding up to exactly the, uh, the, the number of good two. So if this is two, well, then this must be corresponding two. If this is three, this must be corresponding one. So if this is four, this is corresponding to zero. So therefore zero, one, two, three, four from agent B's perspective. And if this is five, this must be equal to one for agent B and this must be two for her, this must be three, this must be four, and finally this must be five for agent B. All right, so uh, the initial endowment, so where is it located? So let's clean up this space, all right. So the initial endowment is three and two. Well, when, when I pin down the initial endowment, which agent I should use, doesn't matter. If you use agent B, uh, you have to find three, two from her perspective. If you're finding agent A, you have to find three, two from that agent's perspective. Well, because both have the same initial endowments, it really wouldn't change anything, obviously. Um, but even if they have a different endowments, it really doesn't de depend on from which agent's perspective you're putting the initial endowment point W. All right, um, but you have to be careful about from which agent's perspective you're looking at. All right, so agent A is having uh, three and two. So that means a point here, all right? So three, good one, two, good two, three, good one for agent B and two, good two for agent B, all right? So it's just in the middle, all right? Well. If we had a, a different problem where agent A had, for example, four unit of good one, one unit of good two, agent B had one, oh, two unit of good two, but, and, and, and three unit of good two. Uh, so as long as, what would be the, what would be the edge word box? The edge word box would exactly be the same. It would be six by four as we have here. So the sizes would be exactly the same. The only difference would be the initial endowment point. Here, the initial endowment point for one for agent A. So it would mean uh, here is the initial endowment. Okay, so this initial endowment would be here, but this one is right here. Okay, all right. So let's stick to our uh, initial example. So this is where the initial endowment is. So what we say, um, there is, or not there is, uh, let's put it this way, a mutual gain, mutual gain from trade uh, at the initial endowment point is possible, is possible if 
there is another allocation, another feasible allocation, feasible allocation, uh, let's call it X, all right, uh, where both agents are weekly, this is what in the parentheses is, weekly um, uh, better off. Okay, so this is what the, uh, a mutual gain from trade at an allocation here, the initial endowment is possible means, all right? So mutual gain from trade at W is possible if there is another feasible allocation, let's call it X, where both agents are weakly better off, meaning their utilities are higher. Mathematically, it means agent A's utility is greater than or equal to agent A's utility on their, uh, at W, and agent B's utility at X is greater than or equal to her utility at uh, W. And, uh, this is end, end, end. So all three must hold. And one of these inequalities, inequalities, are strict, meaning um, either agent A or B is having strictly higher utility, all right? So both agents must have greater than or equal to utility than their utilities in, in, in W, but one of them must have strictly higher utility, okay? That's what it means. Graphically, what it means is the following. So let me use the blue color. And then, <clears throat> so at this point, let's suppose, I don't know what the utility, the indifference curves will look like because I don't know the utility functions. The question should give you that. Uh, so let's suppose, however, the indifference curve for agent A is this. All right, so let's call this UA. And then the indifference curve for agent B is, is this, UB, all right? So what we know is that this is better than set, all right? So better than, oh, this is W, by the way, our starting point, W. So better than um, W for agent B. And then this is, Uh, better than uh, W for agent A. So um, let me just, in general, in the utility theory, if you remember, if I have an indifference curve, which is passing through some point W, all the allocations, all the points that are lying above the indifference curve, well, these indifference curves continue to till infinity, right? So we just stop at some point just for convenience. So all the points lying above the indifference curves are better than, so they give strictly higher utility than W. Every point on the indifference curve, I mean on this curve, ugh, is giving exactly the same utility as W. And therefore, every point below the uh, indifference curve is worse than uh, W, all right? So here, what we have is that uh, the better than set for agent B and better than set for agent A, given that we are at allocation W, are intersecting. So they have non-empty intersection. So for example, if you pick this point, um, so let me make this picture cleaner, given that I already talked about better than set. So in order to make a point, I'm going to draw the indifference curves in such a way that this intersection point is, is larger. All right, so let's, oh, well, it's not larger, but okay. So this is the omega, the W, 
all right? So for example, a point here and a location here, this X, is going to, so is going to give both agent A and B higher utility. How do I know that? Well, as I previously drew, it's the point of intersection. It's an element which is in the intersection of better than set for both agents. That's why. But alternatively, you can draw the indifference curve of agent B that's passing through this allocation X. And so as you see, uh, it's lying on a higher indifference curve from agent B's perspective. So agent B is happier. Well, you can also draw the indifference curve of agent A, as you see, passing through this allocation X, uh, his indifference curve is also lying above the previous indifference curve. It means agent A is also happier. So therefore, both agent A and B are happier at X in comparison to W. So, Given that they start at W, all right, they can exchange, they can trade and end up X, where both are happier. If there is such X, well, we call mutual gain from trade is possible at W. Okay? Well, what about mutual gain from trade at W is not possible? So how do we define that? So is not possible. Well, it means there is no other feasible allocation X where uh, both agents are weakly better off. Meaning, uh, you know, there is no X where these three, I mean, UAX is greater than or equal to UAW, UBX greater than or equal to UBW, and one of those are strict. Uh, so this is not, I mean, this can't be true for any X any feasible X. There's no such thing. All right. So I can negate this uh, definition and, and basically conclude that there is no mutual gain from uh, traits at W. Well, graphically, what would that mean? So let's say, oh, by the way, we can ask this question, is mutual gain from trait possible? at any allocation, right? Any feasible allocation. I mean, why? Well, why we sort of ask this question uh, only for the initial endowment? Well, there's no specific reason. Well, well I mean, there's reason because they, these agents start with this initial endowment, but we can actually ask this question for any feasible allocation, right? For example, let's suppose this allocation, all right? And then let's call this uh, Y, all right? Uh, is mutual gain from trade at Y, is it possible? Well, all you have to do is to draw the indifference curves that's passing through Y. Well, again, I don't know the indifference curves if I don't know the utility functions. Let's suppose this is agent A's indifference curve, and then this is agent B's indifference curve passing through this point, Y. And as you see, once again, this area, which represents the better than set for both the intersection of agent A's and B's better than set. So any allocation in this blue region, any X, any X in this region is actually going to satisfy the first inequality, the second inequality, and in fact, both of which are going to be strictly uh, higher. All right. So therefore, mutual gain from trade at Y is possible in this example, given that the indifference curves are like this. So I'm going to give another example. Uh, all of those examples are working for this initial endowments. I mean, I, I'm not changing the Edgeworth bucks because the initial endowments are fixed. All I'm changing is I'm, I'm, I'm finding an, a, you know, a different allocation. So let's say this is the allocation Y, all right? And let's suppose the agent A's indifference curve is this, UA, all right? And agent B's indifference curve is this, UB, all right? Well, then I ask the same question. Uh, is mutual gain from trade at Y is possible? A uh, possible. Well, here, the better than set for agent A is this black area. The blue area is the better than set for agent B, right? So better than, better than Y for agent 
B and this is the better than Y for agent A. So they intersect only at one point because they're tangent to each other at this point. Well, what about these areas, by the way? This is, well, this area is worse than Y for both A and B, right? I mean, it's, it's below the agent B's indifference curve, so they are worse than agent B. Uh, they are worse for, uh, than Y for agent B. And they are below the indifference curve of agent A, the black curve. And so therefore these points are worse than Y for not only agent A, but also for agent B. So therefore, there is no allocation here no feasible allocation here other than y i mean there's no x where you can make both agents happier and one of them strict you can't so if you pick a point here all right so you're going to make agent a happier because it lies on a higher indifference curve but you will certainly make agent b worse off if you move here agent b will get better off but agent A will get worse off. Worse off means have lower utility. If you move here, both agents will get worse off, meaning both agents' utility will, will be... So pick this point, okay? How do I know the agent B will be worse off? Draw the indifference curve. As you see, it's lying below the original indifference curve. And for agent A, this is the indifference curve. It's lying below the original indifference curve. So agent A is also getting worse off. All right? So it is not possible that these agents are going to mutually gain from trade. So they shouldn't make any trade, basically, uh, if they are initially uh, in point Y. Okay, so that's, that's the idea of uh, mutual gain from trade. Well, it already is 17 minutes, so let me stop here and I'll talk about Predo efficiency in the next video and basically connect uh, mutual gain from trade and the concept of Pareto efficiency, all right?